Welcome back, Keepers of the Flame. I am going to do a Capricorn reading and possibly an Aquarius. I can hammer it all out, right? Sorry about the weird camera situation. It's too... I want the windows open so the light comes in, but it's so bright I can't push it down on the table. Otherwise, it'll just glare everywhere. So, let us get to Capricorn. How does the universe talk to Capricorn? What does the universe want Capricorn to know about talking? What is that exchange of information? How does that look and feel to Capricorn? How can they see it better in their own lives? The fool needs to step into the unknown. Understand that you have divine power and that you just got to step into it, right? And this all, everybody has a divine spark, not exclusive to one sect of people or the other. Everybody has it. It's just how you tap into it, right? And keeping it safe and keeping it sovereign and not giving it away. That's the key. Wheel of Fortune and Temperance in the Upright. Okay. So you're looking at it. You're looking at it. You want to keep your balance with it. Okay, death in reverse, but it's coming in slow. That's Capricorn. Take your time. Figure out how all that energy inter interlocks and exchanges. Nine of cups in reverse because you're afraid you're going to lose your emotional stability. Four of wands. And it might take, take you... It's going to take you to a happy place. It's just going to make you feel a little wobbly at first. Okay. Uh, so you're not looking at it right now and you're not bringing it forward too much. But it is happening in your subconscious, which is good. That's good. Capricorn, keeping it quiet, keeping it calm. Shh, it's all good. Very Capricorn energy. But you're stepping into it with the mentality that you know that there's something more here. You know that there's something going on where you can't see. And you're right on top of it. Okay? You're looking at it and calculating how is this going to fit into my life, into reality, into my being. And how do you keep it balanced? So death is here in reverse. So that just means it's going to take a minute for you to come to this understanding and there might be some emotional upset. And that's okay. That's okay. I know Capricorns are like, I don't get emotionally upset. Okay. Okay, Capricorn. You don't. I'm not. I just didn't. You don't have to show it. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, know how to deal with this. But then you're going to step into this energy anyway. So after a, a smidgen bit of emotional upset, you're going to step into the energy of celebrating it. And then you're not going to, you're not going to look at it very closely anymore. And you're not going to bring it forward. But it's, it's lingering in, in the subconscious, in your wisdom realm. Okay. That's good progress, Cappy. Not all the way there, but it's good progress. Really good progress. And you're you're more focused right now on keeping things balanced and even keeled. And you do not want the emotional upset. But oftentimes when we come to a moment where we have to accept the truth about what's happening and how we're supporting or not supporting certain things, places, people, institutions, and how that plays out into the world at large, because we do, it's called the butterfly effect, right? We have an effect on the entirety of the cosmos, not just this world, the entirety of the cosmos. Okay, so that's a lot for people to take in, and I get it. I get it. It's a lot. I've been doing this indirectly for well over a decade now, almost two. And it's a lot. It's a lot to, to comprehend that you, your little ant being has such a vast expect, 
expansive um, repercussion out in the world. But it'll also bring you to a place of respect, right? It'll also bring you to a place of joy that you do have full control of your being, which <laughs> it's going to make you delighted. Because if it's if it if you get to choose, you we just proved you choose your reality. Your perception is how you see things and how you see the world. We just proved that in the scientific community. So when we're looking at life through a particular lens and we don't like it, we can change the lens. And when we change our lens, life will change with it. This is a lot to cover. <laughs> Capricorn in like a 30 minute video but do some research on it I did I put uh, so many videos in my playlist and whatever else um Dax DLCS that make a difference in my my it, it's a whole playlist so it kind of gives you an understanding of how this controls everything everything we've been told that you know this the center of it is just the trauma activated Lizard brain, BS. <laughs> no, it's the control center of the brain. Period. The end. Period. The end. So if you're in trauma mode, that's all you, you're. You're in survival mode, which means you're going to be looking for ways to just not get killed, basically. So what we're starting to understand is that's also the receptors and perception of our reality. Now, when you are constantly inundated with trauma, that's how you're going to receive and perceive reality. But if you can get yourself out of the trauma mindset and into a safe space right here, you don't control anybody else outside of yourself, by the way. You do not have sovereignty over anything or anyone but your own being. Okay. You don't. You think you do. You think you might have the right to because of recent events, but you don't. And that comes back into the universe in horrific ways that you cannot imagine. So keep yourself and your own identity and your authenticity sovereign. You don't inflict your will upon others. Okay? There are some realms out there of practice and perception that can perceive that to be really bad evil black magic okay so putting your own needs and wants on someone else is a big no-no but the good news about that is is you can take your own personal power back right and you don't need to depend on all these other outside forces coming in and telling you what you have to do with your life force energy with your decisions with your finances with your social life with your career with your unions with other people you don't need that coming in on you that's not right you're supposed to come in here and decide what it is that you need to bring to the world okay and you're starting to understand that and i think when you put it on the wheel that's when it's going to hit the when the rubber meets the road for you and you understand how this is actually playing out, not in just your life, but everybody else's, it's going to piss you off. And that's okay. That's okay. Then you're going to step in your temperance place and be like, oh my God, now that I have the keys to the universe, <laughs> let's celebrate. And then you're like, okay, I get it, but I'm not, uh, I'm not going to bring it to the forefront. And that's Capricorn energy. You don't have to because you got it right here. You now gain the wisdom and the knowledge that you need to know to understand to keep your own personal sovereignty um, protected and take it out into the world. And all you need to do is just exist in the world and it radiates off of you. <clears throat> A little bit further than six feet. So what else is Capricorn? Dang. So, wow, Cappy. Again, two Capricorn style. Uh, thanks. I'm pretty good. Thanks. That's what I'm getting right now. I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. <laughs> Love it. Love it. You are good, Captain. You're doing great. And again, like, people shame emotions all the effing time and it pisses me off so much. <laughs> you can't feel anything. Don't feel anything. Can't you be a narcissist like everybody else? <laughs> 
No, you can still feel, but you don't respond, you don't react, you don't give away your power to anybody else. That's that's a huge, we just make these wild assumptions <laughs> that, you know, everybody perceives reality in the same way. And when we have like emotions, like, well, you don't get to have those. Those are not going to help the situation. <clears throat> Who said? Where can you see that in reality? Yes, when people start yelling and screaming and swearing, it can get a little bit lost and it's not healthy. But would you rather they just stay in the body and cause disease? I'm going to take a wild guess and say no. So when we suppress and repress our emotions, we become depressed and extremely diseased. I cannot, I, good God, some indoctrinated Nazi white coats may be in the comments. Okay. So if that's, what's, if that's the case, go back to the drawing board. Don't take it out on me. Go back to the drawing board and prove me wrong otherwise. <laughs> Leave me a link to a freaking study or something. Um, but you need to understand how this stress and emotion affects you. Okay? So don't glaze over it. Don't just hippity hoppity. Sit with it. Understand it. Realize that emotional waters are just our roadmap with life. There are triggers. Where do we want to go? Right? Is this safe water? Is this not safe water? What am I waiting in right now? Is there a crocodile over there? Do I need to be alert? This is what the emotion is for. <laughs> and people are like, your emotions? <laughs> oh my God. And then ego shaming too is a thing. Like we need a little bit of ego. It keeps us protected. So if you are dealing with anyone who is telling you to let go of your ego... Their ultimate goal is to control and manipulate you. Yep. Well known all throughout the cult community who's done the cult research. If anyone is telling you, shaming you for having feelings, thoughts, <laughs> um, and telling you that you need to get rid of your ego, their main objective is to control and manipulate you. Whether it be on a subconscious level or not, that I can't tell you. But what I can tell you is that when people are trying to tell you not to feel a certain way, not to think a certain way, not to have any personal boundaries and demand respect and dignity from other people, that is when you are in a cult state. You're dealing with a, a leader that is going to... Sorry, I'm getting hot. You're dealing with someone who is going to start inflicting their own will upon you when they are asking you to get rid of ego when they're telling you that your emotions are invalid they are themselves not okay with what the, that anything that you just brought up and they are telling you in not so many words i can't look at this so i'm going to tell you you can't look at it either no, that's okay. If they don't want to look at it, they don't have to look at it. You don't have any power or control over that person. What you do have is power and control over you and say, okay, I need to sit with this. I need to understand this. And if you can't come to an understanding with me, then we don't need to hang. We don't need to be around each other because all that's going to facilitate is more trauma and abuse. That's it. That's all. <laughs> So sitting in the emotional state of discomfort and understanding why it came up in the first place is a key role in how we process life. Because if we don't deal with these, all sorts of horrific things will start to happen to our bodies. Get his name. The doctor just wrote a book about this. Blasted. Oh, I put it in the I put it in the docs that oh, dang it was ugh. it's something about trauma. 
trauma and stress in the body causes disease. We've known this forever, you guys. <laughs> we, it's just a re-remembering is what this is. We've known this forever. We've known this forever and a day. 3,000 years worth of <laughs> medical intelligence flushed down the toilet. And now we get to come back and say, uh, look what we found. No, no, you didn't find it. <laughs> you just rediscovered it. That's it. That's all. So it, it's fresh. It's new, kind of, sort of, whatever you want to call it. But it's there for your research and I do have the playlist docs that make a difference um, playlist so the science is there you just need to implement it into your life right put it on one of these little wheels and start rotating it there's no shame in having emotions they are signifiers on navigating our life waters okay sit with it please 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 okay an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of medicine. Okay. I think I'm done on my rant. Sorry. I had, I get, uh, okay. I'm gonna do what I can <laughs> where I can. Okay, so you got the moon. So you're sitting in it. You're right here with the high priestess, but you got the sun. Okay, in reverse. Like I said, you're not bringing it. You've learned something valuable here and you're not bringing it to the forefront. We're gonna sit with it for a while. That's cool. You let that percolate, Cappy. Decide what you wanna do with it. I know you'll bring it to the material world eventually. That's Capricorn. Ooh, all right, Cappy. Oh, the world in reverse. Cycle isn't complete yet in the Four of Cups, but you're walking away from the emotional bullshit. And it did drain you a little bit. Okay. You're trying to keep it cool. I hear you. It's fine, but I see you. I see you. Just hold in space. Just hold in space again. This is what it means to hold space. You don't speak. You don't say anything. You don't criticize. You don't give a look. You don't do anything. You just hold space. You let that dust settle. Okay. So you, you haven't let this go yet. Quite. This emotional upset. You're, you're stopping the cycle from being completed. You're rejecting the large cup of emotional BS. You're sitting underneath a tree and being like, yeah, mm, not right now. No, I'm good. Um, and it's draining you a little bit. Maybe you need to rewind and listen to my rant again. <laughs> Maybe you need to go buy that book. Ugh. Okay, I'll research it and I'll link it below. But, um, Louis L. Hay has a whole slew of books on this very topic about healing your body with this. And of course, you will, you know, I get you. you're going to need some serious knowledge. You need to do your human homework, as I call it. But it's totally worth it because this is, that's part of stepping into your own authenticity and your own power. So if you do have to go to an institution for any type of care, you can self-advocate. You can tell them, look, I know what's going on with my body. Can you please help me? And if they're like, we need to do 10,000 tests. And you're like, I know what's happening in my body. I've already done my home homework on this. Right? You'll be more inclined to not let them charge you for things that you don't need to do. Or you will know exactly what you need. And you'll be like, I want this test, this test, and this test. And once you get those back, if nothing comes back, you can move on from there. But understanding how that system works is really imperative in being your own self-advocate, okay? We've lost that. We've given the power away over again. <laughs> we give our power away all the freaking time. Start taking it back. Start investing in your own life force energy and keeping it safe and within you. Enough giving it to gurus. Don't give it to any binding spells. Don't give it to... 
people who don't even know you. So if they don't know you, how are they going to have your best interests at heart? Now, I'm not saying that never happens, that there's not good people out there doing amazing, amazing work. But usually they're not in those institutions. Because it's hard to exist there. I tried to get, I tried doing it twice. I can't do it. I can't exist in that. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe that makes me weak or stupid or something. I don't know, but I cannot exist in that environment. Like, I don't know how people do it. So what did, what was I forced to do? Forced to look into it and investigate and understand it. If you have a broken arm, you need a doctor, period, the end. But when it comes to your understanding and knowing yourself, this is just one little cog in the system of that is you. This is one little, little tiny thing that is you, right? And it's connected directly to the emotional waters. <laughs> See, look at these curtains. Look at hiding underneath the curtains, okay? The emotional waters are directly connected to your health, okay? So understanding how this whole system works together. You have a, a social body, a financial body, an uh, intimate body, a uh, <clears throat> purpose body, uh, spiritual, yada, yada. All these little cogs inside of you are clicking all together and it's working in a very proficient manner, okay? Now this is just, I'm using a metaphor. But when you understand how this all connects and is intertwining, you realize with this emotional upset how much it affects you, how much it drains you. Just this one little cog getting out of getting out of the place. Okay? So it's gonna it might take a little bit and it might drain your energy, but it will bring you to a place of enlightenment. Look at all those little lanterns and the birds, okay? And then you can celebrate your own independence because now you know, okay? But I don't see this affecting you long term. You're just gonna have to eventually get out of the subconscious area and bring it into the conscious realm where you're implementing things in your daily life that help you work through your emotional waters that help you navigate your boat in a way that's going to produce good and healthy results. And that's tricky, I'm not gonna lie. You have an emotional body of water that you need to navigate, which affects everything else. But everybody's telling you, don't have emotions. You can't let these people trigger you. You can't do this, you can't do that. Well, nobody's taught you how to process them in a healthy way, so how the heck, right? And the idea behind it, the end goal being that, you know, you don't let other people control you. And that's a huge, huge thing. It's huge, it's life changing. When you're like, yeah, I see you and you're doing some weird stuff that's not sitting right in my system. Once you start that awakening process, a lot of things are gonna upset your system. A lot. A lot. So when you understand that maybe you don't need to respond the way you respond, right? Maybe you just, or react the way you react. You just sit with it for a moment, realize to keep your own sovereign energy and whatever it is safe and protected and not buy into that, right? Not going going full savior mode, right? Can't you see what you're doing right now? You realize how bad this is for you? Look at me. But you're here, you're voluntarily listening to me babble. So, understanding that like you have total and complete responsibility and power over yourself is a daunting task, especially in today's society where we're all looking outside of ourselves going, can you validate me yet? Can you validate me yet? Can you validate me yet? Are my feelings validated yet? Um, can you, can you like, um, 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 that type of thing? Okay. And it's, yeah, it's exhausting. It's emotionally, mentally, physically exhausting, right? And it's not exactly how we're meant to live. So being at peace with that, 
take some time and dedication, okay? <laughs> You're not gonna get there overnight. It's gonna take a hot minute. And some days it will feel exhausting. Like I, you know, gosh, you know, this thing happened today and it really is affecting me. And I don't want it to be affecting me. Why is it affecting me? You know, to analyze it, sit with it, right? Don't let it have complete and utter control over your psyche. If it invokes an emotion, don't embody it. Sit with it. Be like, treat your emotion like, how do I figure it out? Okay. Treat your emotions like long lost lovers that you never ended badly with or whatever that you have a, an understanding with right like you welcome them in and you sit with them be like darling what do you need to tell me today what do you need me to know about this situation and then listen <laughs> something might be going wrong your boundaries might have been disrespected which is usually the case there might be something that someone's inflicting on another person that's you know not setting right with you and then you need to decide what's your what's your duty of care in the situation. Do you need to just go in to yourself and say, I don't have any role here to play in protecting anyone or preventing this from happening further? Now, when it comes to your own boundaries, you can say, um, you know, I'm sure you didn't mean to do the thing that you just did, but I have my own personal sovereignty and respect and self-worth to honor so we're gonna have to set up a different way to communicate or we're gonna have to set up a different way to interact or we're just not gonna interact and that can be tricky that can be difficult but at the same time the moment you start to honor your own feelings and emotions and respect them and not let them embody you and not let other people come in and inflict their reality upon you because it's all subjective at this point which it is. It's always been that way. But hey, let's cause a few more wars. Hey, shall we? <laughs> so understanding that these situations and feelings and thoughts and whatever else do dictate your reality. You have total control over it. So now the goal and object is to get yourself to a space and a time in your own life where you can honor that truth. And you might have a few roadblocks on the way there. We all do. <laughs> You're not exempt from that, okay? I love you, Cappy. <laughs> okay. How do I, like, what do we, I did not, how did I not grab a, hang on. Hang on. I'm gonna go grab an oracle. Card card. I don't think you're lonely, Kathy, but I think you need some solidary, solitary advice right now. This is a good solidarity deck to pull from. It's called Into the Lonely Woods. Look at oh, well, See what I mean about the glare? It wasn't that bad in real life, but man, oh man, the camera's like, hey, is that a second sun? That's cool. Okay, so... What does the universe want Cappy to know about this situation with their communication with the universe and how that works? What does the universe need Cappy to know? Yep, to walk the lonesome road. That's a good card. That's a really good card. to meditate on it's such a cute card foolish they say to walk the strange path loneliness will become your only companion they say as you walk as you take these first steps on the lonesome road to your own self this is not an adventure no indulgence no needless seeking this is a pilgrimage of the soul 
and the time you spend on the path you have chosen, which truly has chosen you, may make you weary. And there will be doubt, and there will be moments where your only companion is the voice inside your head, and that is the point. For when you hear that voice clearly for almost the first time, listen, speak with it, see what you have been saying to yourself, and with each footstep, watch the words become more encouraging, loving, and filled with self-love. Yep. Yep. Amazing, beautiful things will happen if you start understanding how, what it means to truly connect with yourself. Whatever that means for you. But it, it can be and it will be lonely. But you're not alone. That's the whole freaking point. Okay. We are a frequency energy vibration of the universe that has been put into physical form. <laughs> okay so don't uh don't push anything away learn to kind of hold it a little bit understand it know what to do with it how to recognize these patterns and then you can move on from it but recognizing the patterns not just in your own life but in your family's life your community the world at large and the greater cosmos what we send out comes back. So when we uplift something with our vital life force energy, divine spark, whatever you want to call it, when we uplift something, we are sending a message out to the universe. And our job here is to start to detect that logos, understand how that frequency energy vibration actually works and when it comes in. Okay? So be open to receiving. Be opening to the the truths within yourself not what someone else is telling you to think feel say hear, yada 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 that's where things get dangerous right using your own personal discernment and thinking for yourself i hope this helps have a beautiful week Cappy.